doing a, a very traditional Italian pasta recipe. Um, this goes out to uh, Mr. Easy Googie. Um, just loved his godfather pasta the other day, so um, I thought I'd give him one back of my own. I'm going to be doing a potato gnocchi with pancetta, uh, mixed mushrooms, and uh, my very own ricotta, which I'm going to make here. It's very rare that someone will show you how to make ricotta, but um, I was shown the traditional way by an Italian gentleman many years ago, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. So, uh, very keen to get into it. Let's get started. In my pot here, I've got one liter of full cream milk, um, a good amount of sea salt, a good amount of pepper. Bring that to the boil. Right, now, if we look at this other pot over here, this one over here, I've got two kilos of, um, two kilos of potatoes um, that I've boiled. And basically, I've boiled them till they are just firm but cooked. And then I'm going to drain them and let them steam for a few minutes while I wait for my milk to come to the boil. So my milk has now come to the boil, and now I add the catalyst. The, um, it needs an acid that's going to separate the curds from the whey. Here I've got 100 ml of lemon juice and white vinegar. It's a blonde vinegar that I've used. I used it before in a previous dish. Just a natural blonde vinegar. There we go there. Um, but white wine vinegar is fine. So I've used half lemon juice, half vinegar. Now you can see it's come to the rolling boil and that goes straight in. It's almost instantaneous that it splits, but um, you can't really see it until uh, it starts to come to the boil again and then you'll see the curd separating from the whey. I don't know if you can see over there just started there. So we let it boil for a few more minutes and then we uh, strain it. So I don't know if you can see over there, you see how that's separated? That's perfect. So we now pour that into a cloth. Now this is a new cloth that I just bought earlier and I just rinsed it Underwater just to get out any chemicals that were in there so you don't have to worry about me using a dirty cloth um, Cheese cloth is fine muslin cloth is okay um, As long as it's a fine cloth Now just pull the edges together And depending on how um, how dry or wet you like your ricotta, that will depend on how much moisture you squeeze out of it. I like quite a crumbly ricotta for my pasta dishes. So um, I'll try and squeeze a fair bit of moisture out of that. And if you can see there. There she is. So I'll just let it, um, I'll let it sit over a bowl for a few minutes, let any excess liquid come out while I get the gnocchi ready. But right, so here I've got my uh, two kilos of uh, washed potatoes. So I'm just peeling the potatoes. It's very important that you peel them while they're still hot. I prefer to peel them after I've cooked them rather than peel them before. I just find I get a fluffier potato and it doesn't tend to absorb as much water. So I'll just finish peeling this one, which is a bit warm. If you peel the potato after it's cooled down, your mash that you need for the gnocchi won't come out as fluffy. It'll actually be um, quite uh, gluey in texture and it's going to be very hard to work with. So we'll mash that right away. To this mixture I'm going to add black pepper. So 
Saus. And three eggs. Now as I'm mixing, I'm going to be adding handfuls of flour. I can't give you an exact amount how much flour you're going to need because that will vary on um, how much water your potatoes have, have absorbed while cooking. So you're going to have to play it by ear and as the mixture starts to come together and pull away from the side, it should be ready. When you touch it, it shouldn't be sticky at all. It should be quite dry and firm to the touch, almost like a bread dough I suppose. Once I've taken a lot of the moisture out of it, I throw a little bit of flour on the bench. This is the part my wife hates. She never complains when she eats the gnocchi though. And um, a little bit of flour on my hands. I just move it onto the table. And we just we work the flour into it. Again, kneading it like you would a bread dough. And you're just working the gluten so that the gnocchi uh, starts to get um, a little bit more elastic. You build up the elasticity. If you don't do this part and dry it out and work the elasticity, as soon as it gets to the water, it's going to explode and your gnocchi is not going to hold its shape. So this part is very important that you're mixing the flour. Now, like I said before, the gnocchi can take a fair amount of flour. So just be prepared. That's it there. Nice and firm to the touch. Not sticky. So cut it into manageable pieces now. Very careful not to use metal on my uh, on my bench top. I'm just using a plastic spatula. And just roll it out. So I cut them into bite-sized pieces. First of all, and then for the fork, I just make that imprint there. Like that. You see how it curls around? So I do that with all of them. Right, so I've got my water boiling over here. As you can see, I've added extra flour in the bowl just so that the gnocchi don't stick to one another. At the back over here, I've got a bowl just with some olive oil for my gnocchi to go into. So Put the gnocchi in just very gently, a couple at a time, and it's very important that the water is at a rolling boil. If it's just simmering, they'll just sit there and eventually fall apart. Now you can tell when the gnocchi are done because they'll rise to the surface. So out of those uh, two kilos of potatoes, three eggs and one kilo of flour, we got a good eight or nine portions of uh, gnocchi there and they are looking fantastic. Right, so all the hard work has been done now. Now it's time to put this dish together. So over here, that's the gnocchi we made earlier. Over there is our ricotta. We've got some pancetta over there. Oregano. I've just pulled the, um, the leaves straight off the stems and I haven't chopped it at all. Pecorino Romano, which is very similar to um, Parmigiano or uh, Reggiano, but it's, um, but it's sharp. It's made from sheep's milk. 
so it's got a sharper flavor. Now my mushrooms for this dish, on the right I've got normal button mushrooms, in the middle I've got Swiss brown mushrooms, and on the left I've got golden needle or enoki mushrooms. And I've just sliced those all and um, just gave them a bit of a wash as well. So uh, we put this dish together. So in the pan I've got uh, a light olive oil to that now. I add my gnocchi. I've got it on a medium to high heat and just um, keep it moving and give it a chance to go golden brown on the outside so it'll be crunchy on the outside but soft in the middle. While it's cooking I'm gonna add my pancetta which I've um, which I've diced. Now as that um, the fat in the pancetta renders down that'll get absorbed into the gnocchi as well giving it more flavor and give it in, giving it um, a little bit more um, crunch because that fat's gonna add to the um, the process of, of crisping up the outside. As you can see it's starting to color on the outside that's perfect. As you can see I've taken the gnocchi out and I've got it in a separate bowl. In my pan, the same pan, I've added my mushrooms, just a good handful of each. I've added my oregano as well. To that I'm going to add a tablespoon of butter. I'm adding pepper. Right, so my mushrooms are nice and soft now. I add my gnocchi back in. We just toss that through. As in the tradition with a lot of um, good Italian dishes, we're putting this one on a big platter so that it can be put in the middle of the table for everyone to share. Just the smells that are coming off this are just, oh, it's actually scary. It's really good. So now on top of that, we put our ricotta that we made earlier. Our pecorino. And the secret ingredient. There we go, truffle oil. And a little sprinkling of fresh oregano. What do you think of that? So once again, I'd like to say welcome to all the new subscribers and um, yeah, it's going to be a fun ride, so uh, stay tuned.